The views and opinions expressed during this program are not necessarily those of Overseas Radio Network or broadcast partners. All information provided is for educational purposes only. Before taking action, consult a licensed professional. The Coast to Coast. Check one, two. Testing, testing. Now hear me. You're listening to This Week in Costa Rica. Once the volume control is set, do not readjust. On the Overseas Radio Network. That's why I want you to go on the radio. This Week in Costa Rica, bringing you the latest information from expats, experts, and people just like you who chose to escape, retire, and live in Costa Rica. Listen, Listen. and decide in your own mind what sounds best. Got a question? A comment? They have to be dealt with on an altogether different level. Or just want to talk to an expert on living in Costa Rica. Oh, brother, what a way to make a living. <laughs> Give us a call now. Hello? Lines are open and your answers are just one phone call away. Now, if you have some suggestions to offer, we're willing to listen to you. Ready? This Week in Costa Rica with your host. Oh, you. Oh, you. Corey Coates. Hello, folks. It's showtime. Well, hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another edition of This Week in Costa Rica. Lovely day coming to you from the Overseas Radio Broadcast Facility. The big jam-packed show for you. Dan Stevens, James Stinson, Andrew Woodbury, and a great reader email coming up next on This Week in Costa Rica, only on the Overseas Radio Network. So you want to jump out your trick bag and ease on into hip bag, but you ain't just exactly sure what's hip. You're tuned in to OverseasRadio.com, your online radio resource about life abroad. You have never known a Costa Rica like this before. The new Crocs Casino Resort is soon to unveil its four-star resort offering on the exclusive north end of Haco Beach. Crocs Casino Resort will define the words gracious hospitality. Condominium residence owners and hotel guests alike will enjoy everything about resort living at Crocs Casino Resort. Soaring and impressive 17 stories, Crocs Casino Resort is now selling oceanfront studio, one, two, and three bedroom residences. Casual sophistication to find these condominiums sitting high above the Pacific Pacific Ocean. Ascend from your private residence for restaurants, shopping, spa treatments, a sparkling resort pool, drinks, and dancing with friends at the hot Las Vegas style action of Crocs Casino. Come tour the Crocs Casino Resort condominium residences and let us celebrate with you as our newest owner. Visit us online at www.crocscasinoresort.com or call toll free at 1 800 590 0001. Welcome to the new Haco Beach, Costa Rica. Welcome to Crocs Casino Resort. You're listening to the Overseas Radio Network, the exclusive online radio station for the expatriate community. This Week in Costa Rica is hosted by Canadian entrepreneur Corey Coates. Corey has been living and working as a professional in Costa Rica for over five years. Well, I've been lost in my own place. He's built a vast network of professional connections to help you with everything from immigration to relocation. Call in or send Corey an email to talk about the steps you need to take in making your dream of living in paradise a reality. Welcome to This Week in Costa Rica. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget you can find us on the internet. I know you know where that is because you're there now. ThisWeekinCostaRica.com is the website. All kinds of links over to our Facebook page, our Twitter, email, a whole bunch more. Speaking of email, I'd love to get to some of those today. Following up from last week's program, I got a lot of people who wrote in with a lot of questions, comments, and concerns about various aspects of living in Costa Rica and, uh, heck, some concerns about this show. And I have to say I appreciate all of the feedback that I get, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Any uh, feedback that you send our way really, really helps us improve the quality of content that we bring to you here in this program. Let's get to the ugly first, shall we? I got an email here from a fellow up in uh, Minnesota. Basically, it says, Dear Corey, you're a fraud. I did a little bit of research on the internet and found out that uh, you have absolutely no qualifications to profess to be an expert on the matters of living as an expat in Costa Rica. What you are doing on the internet can be deemed dangerous and possibly illegal. 
I would love nothing more than to see you off the air to ensure that you don't put anyone or their money or their lifestyle at any further risk. Though I am very certain you will never mention an email like this on your program, I just wanted to get my two cents in and hope that you stop doing this program as soon as possible. I'm not going to mention your name, sir, but thank you again for the email. I do appreciate the feedback. And uh, I'm not sure exactly where it is that you're coming from on this or where you're going with it. Now, as a rule, I don't necessarily like to argue with people on the Internet. By that, I mean I'm not really interested in comments and trolls, uh, people who write me nasty emails because I do get my share. Um, but I have to say, I don't believe that I'm professing to be any sort of expert in these areas of Costa Rica uh, to which you might refer. What I do believe that I am is an expat. I know this because I'm a card-carrying expat. Uh, as a rentista resident here in Costa Rica, as someone who has not been living in his home country of Canada for seven years, uh, I can certainly sit here and say that I am experienced enough to speak relatively intelligently on a number of matters here in Costa Rica. The purpose of this show uh, which you may have misunderstood, is not to inform you as much as it is to entertain you. And for many people, it's to inspire you so that you have an indication of what it can be like for an individual, that one being me, to work and live as an expat in Costa Rica. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not here to advise you on immigration. I'm not here to tell you exactly how things work. I'm here to give you a somewhat editorialized opinion of living and working as an expat abroad. What qualifies me to do this, to use your words? I don't really know, I guess. I certainly don't have any pieces of paper that came from an institution that certify me as an expat other than my immigration status. But I can say this, I'm certainly not putting people in a, in a risk position, I would say. No more than any of the bloggers out there who are simply writing about their experiences. The only difference, my friend, is rather than writing about my experiences, I'm just speaking about them. Think about it that way, my friend. You are listening to a show where I am talking about living abroad as opposed to just writing about it. I don't really see the difference. The flip side of the coin, I get an awful lot of email from people who have thanked me for bringing this program to them. The, the largest reason being is that they're happy to hear firsthand accounts of people who are living here and have, have found a way to make it work. Because let's face it, not everyone does. And it doesn't make me special. Uh, maybe it makes me stubborn, I don't know. But I can say this. Uh, of all of the emails that I get, I do get my share of, I guess, what you would call hate mail. And uh, what is the motivation behind sending some of this email? Couldn't say. But certainly what I can say here is that it is not my intention to put anyone's life at risk, as, as you put it. I'm simply giving you my personal accounts of living here in this wonderful country. Wonderful to me, I acknowledge many times. Not necessarily wonderful to everyone. Hey, what I'm doing is not for you. Believe me, this is the attitude that you're approaching things with. And I certainly would appreciate your position more were I to try and sell you something. I don't know if you noticed, I don't have a book. I don't have a program. I don't have a tour. I'm not asking you for money. I'm giving you this free and clear. One guy sitting in a little country yapping on a microphone for an hour every week, sitting down talking to some people that I think are doing interesting things here. And I think that beyond the maybe advice that we give you on living in Costa Rica, I think what we're bringing you is a little bit of entertainment from Costa Rica to understand that, hey, you know, the expat community here is rich, it is diverse, and it is unique. And it is a very, very interesting microcosm of economics, politics, opinion, religions, beliefs, 
and lifestyles that I find is unique to this little part of the world. So not to dwell on the topic, but again, I appreciate the email. If anybody else wants to send me one, uh, it is info at thisweekincostarica.com. I read them all. I go through them all. And uh, I'll bring them up here on the air if you'd like as well. Let's get back to this program, though, shall we? Coming up next, I got Dan Stevens from the Costa Rican Times who's going to tell us all about Independence Day that just passed this weekend here. I got James Stinson from Happy Hubs finally on the phone. Super happy about that. We're wrapping up the show, talking to Andrew Woodbury a little bit more. He's doing some community service and volunteer classes here in town. I think you guys are going to want to hear about it. So you guys stick around. You're listening to This Week in Costa Rica only on the Overseas Radio Network. Pack your bags and explore the world with us. You're listening to the Overseas Radio Network. The U.S. government has spoken. It wants higher tax rates, capital controls to keep your money under their control, surveillance to spy on your every email. In short, the government wants to control every aspect of your life and make you their slave. As an internationally minded person, you know keeping everything you own in one country could be disastrous. But how do you get started? Announcing Passport to Freedom. In just three days, you'll learn how to escape high taxes and reduce or eliminate your tax burden. How to form an offshore corporation or trust. The best places to get a second passport. The best places to expatriate and more. This three-day event will reveal everything you need to know about keeping yourself and your assets safe. Tickets to this event in fabulous Las Vegas are extremely limited. So go to PassportOverseas.com. That's PassportOverseas.com. Seats are extremely limited. So register today and take advantage of a special 50% discount for overseas radio listeners. Don't miss this chance to see offshore and expat experts like Joel Nagel, Bobby Casey, Jake DeSillis, Pete Sisko, Andrew Henderson, and more. Go to OverseasPassport.com now and reserve your ticket before the government shuts this opportunity down. Are you an American living abroad? If so, you probably need to file a U.S. tax return and report your foreign bank accounts each year. This can be overwhelming. The rules for expats can be tricky and mistakes can be very costly. The experts at Greenback Expat Tax Services are here to help. Our accountants are all U.S. qualified CPAs or IRS enrolled agents. We offer our customers a flat fee pricing structure, so there are no surprises and we have the experience you need to make sure your taxes are done correctly. If you want an expert U.S. accountant to prepare your U.S. taxes, help you catch up on your U.S. taxes, or simply answer your questions, then contact us today at www.greenbacktaxservices.com. Just finished school? Newly retired? Looking for a change? Get certified to teach English and move abroad like thousands do every year. Global TESOL College comes to Costa Rica, the global organization that trains and certifies more ESL instructors than any other organization of its kind. For the past 15 years, we've trained and certified over 40,000 graduates in the field of TESOL. Live the dream of staying and studying at the beach. You will be living at one of our beautifully centrally located accommodation options in Haco Beach on Costa Rica's Pacific Coast. With a school, beach, and great restaurants all within walking distance, in a safe community with all the convenience of back home, discover why so many choose to earn their teaching certificate in Haco Beach, Costa Rica. Visit us today for more information at www.globaltesolcostarica.com. That's global, T-E-S-O-L, Costa Rica.com. Mention this ad when you enroll and receive $50 off your tuition. Enroll with a friend and receive $100 off. The world is waiting for you and Global TESOL College is your ticket. You're tuned in to OverseasRadio.com, the station to help you reach your dream destination. What? What? What is it? This Week in Costa Rica. Fun, informative, and your questions answered. Talk live with one of our on-air experts and start living your dream now. Welcome back to This Week in Costa Rica. Segment number two. Calling over to my good friend, Mr. Dan Stevens of the Costa Rican Times. Wants 
get located here on the beach on the West Coast. Thanks for joining me again today, Dan. How are you? I am great, Corey. Uh, happy Independence Day. I guess the day after Independence Day. Boy, what a celebration around here. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I actually uh, took a walk into town um, and uh, got to enjoy some fireworks on Saturday night. And there was a nice uh, parade of lanterns uh, in the Central Park in Hako. And uh, it was it was just a real enjoyable time. A lot of festivities. What's the old expression? Happy birthday, Costa Rica. You don't look a day over 191. Uh, well, actually, they're 192 now. Yep. <laughs> I was just I was being <laughs> nice, you see. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's uh, basically the, the history of this is uh, this is the, when Mexico won independence from uh, the Spanish crown uh, on October or uh, September 15th. And basically the rest of the Latin America, which uh, wasn't uh, – present at the time, um, our different individual countries weren't present, got their independence as well. So the, uh, the torch passes through Guatemala and arrives in, uh, in Costa Rica um, for uh, uh, the Independence Day. It's kind of fun. Celebrations here are amazing. Parades, fireworks, shows, all the Independence Day type celebrations you'd expect. And then, of course, a lot of things with that Latin Antico flair to it. One of the things I love seeing is they do this kind of thing with the kids where they get all these neat paper lanterns and stuff and, and they're hanging on these poles and they walk them around in the parade and stuff. Super cool. Yeah, it was pretty amazing to see it uh, firsthand. We're hoping to get some video out of it uh, in the next about 24 hours as well. well. It's hard to believe this is my seventh Independence Day here in Costa Rica. And uh, anyone who lives in this country or is about to will probably find out shortly that uh, drums are involved for days and days in advance. Yeah, it's 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 humorous though. But where I'm located, I don't it, I don't have to enjoy the uh, the drum music. When I was in San the San Jose area, uh, the the drums would be because all the all the the Costa Rican kids that's like the instrument they want to play because they're all excited about it and it makes the most noise. And if you're located by a school in the San Jose area, expect to not get much sleep after about seven in the morning when they start having practice for the uh, Independence Day and other festivals down here. Well, it all goes back to Juan Santa Maria, who's uh, the airport. Is, is named after as well, was a drummer. Uh, maybe sometime if we're bored, we'll talk about the history of Juan Santa Maria. But the interesting thing that you mentioned and I thought was hilarious is that when I first moved to Costa Rica and I was living in the Aradia area as well, I was living about a block away from a public school, which meant that a week ramping up to Independence Day, about, oh, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, this giant tin gym is filled with a hundred drummers just pounding and pounding and pounding. If it weren't the roosters that would get you up, it's going to be the drums. <laughs> I laugh because the same thing happened to me. I, I was actually around a uh, half a mile away and I could still hear it. So, yeah. so something you got to get used to around here. And, uh, you know, and it's fun, though, because the kids are, are really, really into this. I mean, you know, in, in Canada and the U.S., Independence Day is great for a number of reasons. We do a lot of the events that we have, like barbecues and family get-togethers and stuff. But here, uh, it's definitely a very national celebration where families and kids are hyper involved right from the get go. And I also really like, I mean, if you get to experience, come down here for September 15th, it's, it's pretty amazing seeing the dress that, they, that, that these children are in as well. Sure. Because the, the, the dresses that the girls, the, the young girls are wearing and the, even the outfits the guys are wearing are pretty amazing. And they show how much um, pride the Costa Ricans have in their country. You know, you mentioned the fireworks show that I missed because I, uh, I was out having some Argentine food that evening. But I'll tell you, it's amazing in Costa Rica that there are fireworks displays practically every weekend in almost every town for almost no reason whatsoever. Uh, it's, it's fun, though. I mean, it's, 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 the best is right near, near Christmas time when I was living up in the mountains of Escazú. I think they had a fireworks show every single night for about two and a half to three weeks in a row. Yep. And, it, but, I mean, it, and it was kind of fun, though. I mean, it got a little annoying at the end, but, uh, I mean, at the, it kind of puts a smile on your face. It sure does. And, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, fireworks are pretty, so what the heck? <laughs> True that. You got you got a bead on this thing. I don't understand what's going on here. Now, I under I, I understand in the United States and throughout the world, they've kind of tried to put together this sort of carbon credit system. And now there's going to be a carbon credit market in Costa Rica. I don't get this at all. Uh, well, um, a lot of people are saying this is smoke and mirrors and um, from the Costa Rican government because Costa Rican government set a carbon neutrality goal of the year 2021 for in Costa Rica. And basically that means that um, 
they have to offset all the country's carbon dioxide, dioxide, dioxide emissions in transportation, energy, and everything, including agriculture, which rep- represents about 37% of Costa Rica's emissions. Hmm. Well, they're in, in stating this carbon market where there's a global carbon market, et cetera, but, the, but what they're doing is they're being able to, if a, I guess, a, a business has uh, – is polluting a lot or whatever, they can buy these carbon credits. Or if they have a project that's a green project, they'll be able to sell carbon credits in a local domestic carbon market. However, most of these people that are looking at this are saying, well, Costa Rica, you don't look really, you're trying to do anything that green right now with every, the shark fitting that's going on, the Hiro Mora incident, the turtle egg poaching, and the list goes on and on. And they look at these government organizations that are involved with this. I mean, we just had a, a person in Punta Arenas that was arrested for involvement uh, in the shark finning, and he was uh, in, in charge of Inco Pesca, which is the, the government organization. So it's kind of a, a two-faced for Costa Rica to be even putting this in. Yeah, I, you know, I worked in a lot of the, the private enterprises here in Costa Rica for years, and they always had these initiatives on, on a private level. Uh, to lower their carbon emissions as part of their social responsibility programs. But, you know, it's just maybe it's me because I'm a bit of a libertarian. But when you start seeing the government involvement in this, when cash starts changing hands and these credits start being distributed, I get myself a little bit nervous. I I do as well. And I I think that if this was being run by an outside private agency in Costa Rica where – uh, payoffs and kickbacks and all these other things that happen on a daily basis in Costa Rica um, could be eliminated, then I think it'd be a, it'd be a great thing. But I, I look at it and I, and I see that, okay, f- first of all, the, the carbon credits are only going between 3 and $5, which is very low on the carbon credit market. Um, and the second thing is, if they're going to be, have their own government organization, then you know that a project's going to be able to go to the, one of these diplomats or one of these agents and go, hey, look, I've got $10,000 right here, and I need a million carbon credits uh, uh, allocated for my project. And my, uh, I'm, I'm, of course, these are all hypotheticals. I'm not saying this is going to happen. It's, it's dead set in stone. But to me, I think that this is going to happen on, on a daily ba- basis, being able to pay for carbon emissions, and it's going to hurt Costa Rica in the long run. You're not talking out of the top of your hat either. I mean, there, there are precedents set here. There is a longstanding history in Costa Rica for this type of corruption. Um, so I, I agree with you. An independent outside party who would be monitoring or overseeing this process, I think, would be, would be part of a solution. But, you know, I guess we're going to have to do what we do in Costa Rica, and that's kind of sit and wait and see. Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be enjoyable to to see. I mean, because I, I am for protecting the environment. I think that's a very very important, and and I do believe that uh, offsetting carbon emissions is also important. But again, like you said before, once the government gets involved, there there's just too much access to be able to to turn this into a corrupt enterprise. All right, we have a couple more minutes to play here before we go to break, and I'd love to talk to you a little bit more because I know you guys over there at the paper are getting more and more heavily involved in community service. Well, yeah, we, we are. We're trying to get a little more involved in community service in the Hako area. And I'll just address that area right now since we're, we're short on time. Um, working with the Hako Chamber here, which has, has really put um, a Hako on the map. They've cleaned up a lot of the areas. They, they've put into effect uh, the local community can get involved with beach cleanups. They can, they can be involved with going to the library in Hako and being able to tutor in afternoons. Um, I mean, there's just so much um, that the local community is able to do if you want to get involved with this. Yeah. And, and, and I think that giving back to the community you're in, no matter where you are in the world, is very, very rewarding. And it's, it's, I, I honestly think it's part of a social responsibility. I, I 100% agree. We're actually, um, you know, I'm affiliated with the Global TESOL College here, and we're doing uh, volunteer English classes right now as part of our program. And uh, Andrew Woodbury is probably going to stop in later on today to speak on this a bit. It's amazing how quickly you can put together all of these great volunteer groups, for example, of adult education classes. Uh, What a great way to get involved in the community. And Andrew's going to speak on this, I think, a lot. How going up and down the street all of a sudden, you've got friends all over town who are involved in these projects with you. I mean, what a great way to connect. 
Yeah, it, it's a great way to network and, 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 and for businesses and individuals to see you going out there and being involved with the community it, it is they, they kind of go, OK, you know what? It, it's not for I'm not doing it to try to promote my business or try to try to get my name out there. A lot more respect for you. That's it. We got to run here, Dan. Thank you so much for your time again today. As always, Dan Steven can be found at the Costa Rican Times. Links can be found at thisweekincostarica.com as well. Thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate you. No, hey, hey, have a great day, Corey. All right. We will be right back. I've got a great guest coming up today. Mr. James Stinson from a super cool company that I mentioned before, happyhubs.org. Stick around, guys. So you want to jump out your trick bag and ease on into hip bag. But you ain't just exactly sure what's hip. Your expatriation destination. This is OverseasRadio.com. This is Jason Hartman, and I want to welcome you to the Jet Setter Show blogcast, an audio version of our written blog at jetsettershow.com. You can find the full-length podcast at jetsettershow.com or on iTunes, where we interview thought leaders and experts on exploring lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Here is today's blogcast. Thank you, Jason. The concept of fractional ownership of luxury items allows more people than ever to live the life of a jet setter. Condos, cars, private jet airplanes, yachts, and even fine art can be yours for a fraction of the cost. Of course, you only get to enjoy it for a fraction of the time, but to many people, this is better than nothing. We're used to the idea of fractional ownership in relation to condos. You pay a yearly fee, maybe a few thousand dollars, for the use of a condo for a particular week. 51 other people are sold the same rights, and voila, every week of the year is filled. It's not especially cheap, but it is cheaper than buying a condo outright on the French Riviera, Acapulco, or the Florida Keys. The latest fractional ownership craze that lets you live the life of a jet setter is vineyards. That's right. Dip your toe into the Argentinian wine country for a mere $12,000. For that low entry cost, you receive a 125th share of the La Vida Buena Argentine Boutique Vineyard, plus the use of a two-bedroom, two-bath rental casita. With wine sales from the region soaring to customers in the United States, Canada, and Brazil, local developers estimate your $12,000 investment would be generating approximately $2,000 annually by year five. Don't expect any profit for the first few years, because it takes a while to get the vines up and growing. The on-site rental casita will help boost the vineyard's income and will also be available to owners interested in taking a look at how their investment is proceeding. Don't say we never told you how to live the life of a jet setter vineyard owner at a fraction of the cost of starting one yourself. For more, visit jetsettershow.com. For the Jet Setter Blogcast, I'm Will Weeks. Thanks for listening to this audio blog, and please see disclaimers and important information at the website. This is Kathleen Petticord and Leif Simon with the Live and Invest Overseas Minute on the Overseas Radio Network. In the current climate, it's increasingly difficult for an American to open a bank account in a foreign country. Even as a foreign resident looking to open a local operating account, in most countries it's going to take time and effort. A corporate account is going to be a little bit tougher, and a private investment bank account for your investment dollars is going to be virtually impossible in some countries, especially Switzerland. Anywhere in the world you want to open an account as a foreigner, you're going to be required to produce a portfolio of documentation. This is a much more complicated process than in the United States. The key things you're going to need, of course, are identity. You'll have a copy of your passport, a second identity. Your driver's license will normally work for that. And you're going to need two banking reference letters from current banks, whether that's in the U.S. or elsewhere. And then you'll also need typically an introduction letter from an accountant or an attorney. For more information on making the leap overseas, visit us online at liveandinvestoverseas.com. Sit back and relax. You are tuned into the Overseas Radio Network. You know what I just heard? What? Costa Rica has the reputation of being the happiest country on earth. But it gets better. better. This Week in Costa Rica brings you the best information. The best. The best. From the people who understand why so many choose to call this beautiful place home. Bringing you the latest information from expats, experts, and people just like you who chose to escape, retire, and live in Costa Rica. This Week in Costa Rica. Pura Vida. And welcome back to This Week in Costa Rica. Big thanks to Dan Stevens from the Costa Rica Times, as always, bringing me all the news and blues out of Costa Rica. 
got a ton of email in the last two weeks on a topic that I spoke about. The sort of lifestyle design hacking, as we like to call it. The idea of being able to get mobile and uh, be a global entrepreneur. Doing your work anywhere that you choose in the way that you like. Making your lifestyle first in a way. And finding a way to have kind of a happy work environment. And in this research, I came across a really interesting company that is in beta right now. It's called happyhubs.org. And I'm lucky enough to have on the phone with me right now from Happy Hubs, Mr. James Stinson. James, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I appreciate you taking this call today because here on this particular radio program, we get this question a lot. And that's people who are thinking about coming down to Costa Rica, not necessarily to live or retire, but for short stints because they are, they're mobile in their work and in their enterprises. And you guys are putting together something that I think is really fascinating. Can you give our listeners an overview of the company and what your objectives are here? Absolutely, yeah. Happy Hubs was really born out of the idea that you can live and work in a vacation-like environment around other people that are like-minded, you know, entrepreneurs uh, or in a startup phase and they're, they, they buzz when they get around each other with ideas and solutions. And so let's not only have this environment, but let's have it in exotic places all over the world, starting with Costa Rica. This and so it's kind of like a vacation, but it's much, it can be longer term than that. And it can actually be your home where you don't even need to have a home. You just, you live in a happy hub and you move around to different happy hubs that have the kind of things you would expect, like high speed internet, um, good food, massage, uh, accessibility to things that are really important, like the beach and surfing, that kind of thing. You know, it's a great idea because we see as the, the digital age continues to emerge and the virtual office really starts taking hold, that more and more people are choosing this option, that they're just becoming these global entrepreneurs who are traveling and working wherever they choose and using the destination as an opportunity to become more productive, happy and healthy in their work. And you got it. You nailed it. And, you know, it's kind of like, why do you need to own a house or why carry all of that debt if your heart is telling you what you really want to do is travel and live around like-minded people? If you love going to seminars and being around that kind of environment, you know, why settle? And for me, one of the most important things is the value of proximity. Why have neighbors that you have nothing in common with? Why not surround yourself constantly with people who can make you better and make your business better? You know, it's a great point as well, because I see this as well as, a, as an entrepreneur working here in Costa Rica, that networking is everything. You know, working where I'm working now and with some of the networks of folks has opened other business opportunities that I otherwise would not have found back in, in my home country of Canada and many people say back in the U.S. as well. Yeah, I mean, there's just something magical about being around innovators and entrepreneurs and people that are really trying to make something happen in a space that maybe, you know, other people aren't exploring. And, and to be around them while you're advancing in your own business, there's just, you know, as you get kind of this, this thinking outside the box from all different angles, it really does help you move forward at a much accelerated pace. You know, it's interesting. I was just watching a movie the other night, and it's called Up in the Air. Uh, with George Clooney. And basically he goes around and he does these seminars where he says, how much of your life can you fit in your backpack? How heavy does that thing become? And how much are you willing to drag it around? And it really speaks to that idea you're talking on, James, which is uh, how much am I really attached to unnecessarily that is this kind of bag of bricks that I carry around with me and is even holding back my life and my career? It's a perfect example, yeah. I mean, in, for me, it's really just, I need my laptop, I need my iPad, and my passport. And if I look around, I see you've got those things and my wallet. Gotcha. <laughs> as long as I have those things, I'm good. And then from there, I just want to have a great environment where I can really enjoy myself. So that really leads into the next question. Then you're starting here in Costa Rica uh, with your first Happy Hub location here in Beta. How exactly does this work for individuals who are interested in participating or getting themselves involved in this? It's really simple. If they go to happyhubs.org, they'll see a little one minute teaser about it. And then when they continue with their email, they'll see a page that talks about, you know, what are some of the pricing? If you do it by the week, if you do it by the month, what kind of amenities can they expect? They'll see pictures of the place that we're launching. 
and they just literally, it's so simple, they just apply and say they're interested and we're picking five people for our beta launch on, I believe it starts October 20th for one month. They don't have to stay the whole month if they only want to stay for a week, but essentially we're looking for five people and then there's going to be myself and my partner at the initial launch. We're going to be taking lots of pictures, we're going to be having lots of excitement around it, and then from there we're going to do another media launch and let people know that, you know, Happy Hubs is here, it's here's what they can expect and kind of get much more of a visceral experience through the people that have joined us during the beta launch. We here at Overseas Radio are located in Haco Beach, Costa Rica, just north of where you guys are going to start up, and that's down in beautiful Manuel Antonio. Why did you guys choose that location? Well, you know, I've actually lived in Haco um, here and there over the last four years. I love it there, and I love the surfing there, and you've got Hermosa right there in your backyard. Um, and then there's Hermosa, which... I, I'm, excuse me, Manuel Antonio, which, you know, really the Manuel Antonio National Park and everything is kind of the gem, I think, of Costa Rica. And, you know, I think a lot of it had to do with the branding of that spot. You know, a lot of people know Manuel Antonio. There's like 300,000 visitors a year that go there. And I was able to secure a property that was just perfect for what we're trying to do in size. Um, I wasn't finding those kind of opportunities in Hako per se, not that they don't exist. I just didn't find them um, in advance of what we're trying to do here. And I just said, you know what, um, as long as there's some good surfing nearby, which I did find, I said, we can make this happen here. And it's, it, it really, it's not on the beach, um, which is what I was sort of looking at with Hako but it is just a couple of minutes away from a good surfing beach in Manuel Antonio, which I didn't even know existed. Um, it's like a, a locals beach that I found that is really cool. And it's just everything else is perfect for what we're trying to do there. So we picked it and said, this is a great home base for what we're trying to do. I think it's a great idea on so many levels. And, uh, what I'm seeing here from, from an enterprise standpoint is how expandable this business is. Have you guys kind of got your eyes on other locations already, or is there anything you don't want to reveal this soon? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, ultimately, I think the vision is that especially if you're like an ADD sort of entrepreneur like I am, where you kind of you love to live in a place for a certain period of time and it's, you know, it starts to feel like you've been there forever, but you've only been there for a month or two. Yeah. Um, I want to make it so that you can continue to hop, hop, hop all the way around the world. And, you know, before you even get there, what to expect, you know, you're going to have a chef that's making healthy food. You know, you're going to have massage therapists that are giving you great massages. You're going to have the amenities around you, you know, walking distance, biking distance to get what you need. Um, and literally you can hop it. You could hop your entire life if you want it um, to a different spot every month. Now you might come back to some of the same spots, some of your favorite spots. And within that, we're also going to have a network. So you'll also be able to see, who's at each of these different locations and choose not only based on the destination, but based on the caliber of people in these different locations where you want to go next. This is such a great idea on, on, on again, like I say, so many levels. It's when I was back in Canada working and uh, in, in a corporate stooge, if you will, at that time, I really thought about how cool would it be if I could find a way to kind of bounce around the world, but still get my work done. You know, maybe go spend two months in Costa Rica, maybe spend a month in the south of France, maybe spend a month in Thailand. Um, but the thing is that I'm thinking is that a lot of the entrepreneurs who are in the United States right now, uh, what can we do to help some of these guys get over that little bit of fear? How can they get over that first hump and dip their toes into this water? Buy a ticket. <laughs> I mean, really, I think we all have that fear. It's not getting over the fear. It's taking action in spite of the fear. And I, I can remember when I was making my first big trip, I literally was going to India. That was my very first jumping in. So talk about culture shock. And, you know, once you make that jump and once you get outside of the bubble and actually see, Hey, I'm alive. It may not be as convenient, you know, in a place like India as it was in the United States, but I'm alive. It's enjoyable. It's different. I get to see outside the bubble. You get so many things that happen on a subconscious level when you finally just make the decision, even though I'm a little concerned, even maybe a little scared about this move, I'm going to do it anyway, because guess what, it, especially when it comes to travel, you jump and the net does appear. Like I know so many people who made the jump, even if they didn't have the money, even if they didn't have the resources, they thought as long as they could get to that place 
And because they're resourceful people, they make things happen in that environment. Great advice. Happyhubs.org is the website in beta right now. When are you guys planning to officially launch? Well, we are in a, the launch of getting people to apply for the beta. So you can go there now, you can see the little teaser video, and then you can actually apply if you want to be part of the initial five. Once we do our one month with the initial five and we have the videos and the pictures and everything, then we're probably going to open up another location or two and start to expand it. So if you just got to the initial beta and said, I want to stay, you'll probably be able to stay. If you said, I want to go to another location, you can go to another location. And if you wanted to be a part of it now, you can literally get started now. Great stuff. We've been speaking with James Stinson from happyhubs.org. I want to thank you so much for your time. And the next time you're in this area, let's get you in studio and get a longer conversation going. What do you say? You got yourself a deal. I come back on the 20th of September. And I do plan on passing through Hako. So you got yourself a deal. I'll look you up and I'll connect with you. That sounds great. Thanks, everybody. I got to run to a commercial break right now. Happyhubs.org is the website. We'll be right back right after these messages. Live call-in shows and hosts from your favorite countries. This is the Overseas Radio Network. You've decided that you want to move overseas for that quality of life experience you've always dreamed of. But you don't want to give up the best of back home. We agree. Things like high-speed internet, safe neighborhoods where you can stroll along a shaded sidewalk, a place where you know your neighbors and you have friends close by. These are important. Grand Pacifica Beach and Golf Resort gives you the best comforts of back home paired with the exceptional lifestyle only available south of the border. Imagine strolling along over three miles of secluded beach, playing around a round of golf along the ocean, surfing a world-class break all the years enjoying a fine meal on your balcony and toasting to another spectacular sunset. All this and more can be yours only an hour from Managua. Complete home and lot packages start under $100,000 and a nice home on the golf course is yours for the mid-twos. Come visit for a weekend and enjoy our Oceanside Golf Course. Ride horseback on the beach, meet your future neighbors, and make some new friends. Grand Pacifica may be a place you'd like to call home. For more information, email mike at mikesgringolife.com. That's mike at mikesgringolife.com. Looking for a one-stop resource to help you plan your overseas retirement? Retirement Abroad makes it easy to research destinations and professional services from Panama to Penang. Or use the Retirement Abroad directory to showcase the kind of property or living arrangement international retirees are looking for. Planning an event? If it's right for Retirement Abroad, we'll add it to our calendar. Or maybe you like to write, are living overseas, and have advice or a story to share. Send it to us at retirementabroad.com. Have you always dreamed of living abroad, but you are afraid it might be difficult? JustLanded.com helps you make the move. The free information on JustLanded.com helps you get a job, find a house, and a good school for your children. You can also meet other expats in our online community. Visit www.JustLanded.com and find out how easy it is to live your dream abroad. That's JustLanded.com. From China's Great Wall to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, this is the Overseas Radio Network. And welcome back to This Week in Costa Rica. Segment number four. I don't want to hear anything from the peanut gallery. As I got Andrew Woodbury back here on the line again. I'll tell you why. Get a lot of emails in about these visa runs people talk about all the time. You might be wondering what the heck I'm talking about. For those of us who live down here, and uh, are in this kind of limbo state. And that is to say they come in on a tourist visa. Well, that's only good for 90 days in most cases. And this applies to a lot of English teachers who come down here and try and make a career out of it, either while they're in process for a work visa, or in some cases, hey, they just don't get one at all because they're looking at only staying for maybe eight months. So I called up my good friend Andrew Woodbury at the Global Tesla College because I know he just posted two great articles recently on the Costa Rican Times about making these visa runs, if you will, up to Nicaragua and down to Panama. So first of all, how are you, Andrew? I'm doing all right, Corey. How about yourself? Appreciate you coming in. I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Look, can you make heads or tails of this for our listeners? Yeah, uh, basically, it's, it's what you just said. Um, most, you know, 95% of English teachers in Costa Rica uh, do not have a work visa. 
uh, as a result, they're required to to leave the country every 90 days um, on, on what we, what is deemed not not officially called, but what we all call in the business a visa run, uh, which basically is is to renew your tourist visa for another 90 days or or three months. Um, the most common places, obviously, are the border countries, uh, Nicaragua or or to Panama. And there are, are many different places that you can go in each one. And, and the articles that you refer to, yeah, I, I outlined a couple of options. Definitely not, not all the options, but uh, some of the, the main ones that people go to. Getting back to the main idea, though, and, and this is the question that I was asked for years and years and years when I was managing language schools here in Costa Rica, is that, I mean, hey, isn't this kind of illegal? I mean, the answer, I guess the answer is yes, but, but no also at the same time. Um, English teachers are kind of given a free pass in Costa Rica. Uh, because they're doing a service or providing a service that that Costa Ricans themselves cannot uh, provide, um, schools do also call it something different. So it, it's a little bit tricky, but but it's it's actually it's okay uh, so long as you abide by this this ninety day visa uh, process. If you don't do the visa run, that's where you would find yourself into a little bit of a sticky situation. Yeah, it's not really a loophole in the immigration law so much as it is. It's it's just a law in the books that basically says. Uh, if you exit the country for a minimum of 72 hours, you can re-enter and, and get renewed on a 90-day visa. But it's getting a little bit stickier now because in many cases, they're asking for some sort of proof that you're going to continue your travels or exit the country or return back to your home country when you come back into Costa Rica. Well, right. Uh, basically, what, what, well, basically, what they're doing now is they're being more strict on the rules that already exist. Uh, which is when you travel to any country in the world, you know, immigration should require to see uh, some sort of exit ticket. Uh, the situation in Costa Rica previously and, the, and, you know, up until the last few years, uh, they weren't asking for that. Uh, now they are. And basically, whenever your exit ticket is, if it's 30 days from now, if it's five days from now, if it's 90 days from now, that's what you're getting stamped in for. Um, so the best, the best suggestion is to always have an exit ticket for exactly 90 days uh, from when you're crossing that border to ensure the 90 days. Stamp. I don't know if you've heard anything about this, but I was reading recently that it's getting a little bit more complicated at the Panama border uh, that they're asking, for example, now let me try and walk th the listeners through this because it's super complicated. You, you go down to the, Pan the Panamanian border and in order to enter Panama, you have to prove that you're going to be leaving Panama within, I believe, the next 30 days. So you have to prove some sort of exit back either into Costa Rica or your home country when you go into Panama. And then vice versa, when you leave Panama to re-enter Costa Rica, you have to prove that you're going to be leaving Costa Rica or going back to your home country again. Right. For some reason, and I'm not sure the answer to this, the, the Panama borders seem to be a little bit stricter uh, in this area. We should say, though, we should mention that these, what we're talking about is the rules that are being applied in the, what you know, quote unquote, walk across borders. If you're in an airport, it's a little bit looser. It's not quite as strict. Yeah, you're right, because I'm getting reports from people who are going down to Panama now, and they're saying they also want proof of solvency. You have to show them that you have at least $500 in cash or accessible funds before you even enter Panama. So there's a lot of people who are getting on the bus going down to the Panamanian border and going, hey, I don't have either the documentations or the banking documentations necessary to get across the border. And they're getting caught or they're getting fined or they're getting turned away. Yeah, you know, I've, I've heard that same thing. Um, the Panama border, especially the one over by, by Bocas del Toro, has always been a little bit uh, messy. Um, that those, I've heard those types of things too. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's, what they're just doing at the border, doing it on their own, or if that's an actual Panama rule. I can't imagine that it's it's something like that. You know, travelers just traveling around don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, to be able to show to people. Sure. So it doesn't seem like a, a realistic option. Well, I'm looking as well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look deeper into this because I'm getting some emails on it. And it seems like there are a couple of operations that might be borderline illegal around the borders as well as one could expect in Central America, scamming them for tickets, scamming them for documents, uh, asking them for extra stamps and things. So... You know, we're going to look deeper into this because it's not as easy as it once was. That's correct. You know, the, the old Panama scam was always they made you pay, you know, $2 or something to get into the country, which was just, a, they would, you know, the guys at the border would pocket that money. And, you know, $2 here, $2 there, you know, not a big deal. But now that they're asking for $500 or more, uh, a proof of bank account is becoming a much bigger deal. Sure. Nicaragua still, though, is always easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's pretty straightforward, you know, they're easy going up there and you basically just walk across and, and in some cases come right back. I mean, it's it's a total opposite of what Panama is. Well, there was a time when, when you and I were both in, in that immigration limbo and that we were leaving the country and coming back. And uh, I would say that Nicaragua was the easiest because you could take that line that's called Tikabus, 
which is basically getting on a bus in San Jose. You arrive at the Nicaraguan border. The guy on the bus takes all your passports for you, gets them stamped. You jump off the bus. They search your bags. You get back on the bus and away you go. It's really, really simple. Um, you know, part of the, the, the great thing about Nicaragua is, yeah, you just grab on the bus from San Jose and it takes you to the border. You get off, you walk across, you get back on the bus and the bus goes all the way to Managua. But obviously you don't, you just get off, you know, wherever you're going. Uh, if you're going to Panama, there there is no bus direct to Panama unless you're going all the way to Panama City, um, which is a long way. I think it's a 16, 17 hour bus ride. Uh, if you're going somewhere else, then you kind of, you know, part of the adventure, but you kind of have to hoof it yourself on, on public buses getting to the Panama border. All this said, I mean, in the first year that I was in Costa Rica, uh, you, you consider, for example, many people go home for Christmas. Uh, there's one visa run knocked out. Uh, some people mm-hmm. like to go home in the middle of the year if they can or go like home for Thanksgiving, that sort of thing. There's a second visa run taken care of. If you put Panama and Nicaragua into it, you've got your year pretty much covered and you got a lot of great travel as well because, you know, one of, one of the things I loved about your article was really all the great things to see and do when you're up in Nicaragua. Well, that's the silver lining of this. I mean, it, the most English teachers that, that you and I have worked with, you know, find, they go home probably twice a year. They go home at Christmas and then one other time, you know, probably halfway through the year, June, July, something like that. So really all we're talking about is one, maybe two necessary visa runs in a given 12-month period. Uh, and then that that's the silver lining as well of teaching here is that you you know you do get to travel. People kind of get caught up sometimes in the the work and the the teaching and and that kind of stuff. But doing the visa runs, going to Nicaragua once and then going to Panama, you get to travel. You get to see a, a really a lot of different cool things. Which is why a lot of English teachers come down here in the first place. And I think what the the law is doing, and as you mentioned, it's not these are not new laws. These are just being more heavily enforced. Is it's I think trying to curb the what's called a perpetual tourist. The people who are coming down to Costa Rica live here for five, six, seven, eight years, run a business down here, and don't go through the necessary process to get a legal residency. They just simply enter and exit the country as often as they wish, renew this tourist visa. And I mean, it's not really illegal, but it's certainly not the advisable way to do it if you're, if you're a business owner or you're planning on living here long term. Well, I mean, that's it. I mean, English teachers aren't the target of, of these laws. You know, English teachers come here for a year or two, maybe three on occasion, uh, and then go on to do something else. It's vice versa. The, the targets aren't people who, who retire here, who buy properties and kind of mind their own business. They, they, they're not the targets either. It's the target, like you said, the people that are, are owning businesses or running businesses have money coming in and out of the country and are just, you know, illegally or paying someone to stamp their passport and, and perpetually staying here for eight, nine, ten years. Those are the people really they're trying to weed out. Yeah, absolutely. And those people are simply not paying taxes. Exactly. And that's it. Yep. You're right. There's something else I wanted to call you about because I was talking to Dan Stevens earlier today and we mentioned community service again in this area and how he and his team over at the Costa Rican Times are getting involved more and more uh, in the Jaco and the Hermosa area. But there was something you were telling me just recently with the Global Tesla School that I thought was fascinating. You needed to put together a, a demonstration class basically for a lot of the teachers who are coming in, in training in Costa Rica to do their practicum, basically a practice class where they can take their techniques and employ them in a real class setting. I understand you were able to put together a group of students almost instantly here uh, just by jumping online and, and using some of the local resources like Facebook. The, yeah, I, not just like Facebook. It was through Facebook. Okay. I, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I put a group uh, together through a, a local Facebook group here in Hako. Uh, for exactly what you've mentioned, for our students to practice. As the school is getting bigger, as we're getting more and more students uh, every month, uh, we're, we're continually searching for more practice opportunities because, you know, let's face it, teaching, in order to be a really good teacher, you need to do it. And anybody can sit in a room and, and listen to me yabber on for, for days and days, but until you start teaching your own classes, uh, you know, that's, that's where you really, really, uh, really gain the, the experience. So uh, in that spirit, I, I was looking for people who were interested in in taking free English classes uh, from from our students. So I, I put out a Facebook message, and I got probably thirty responses within twenty four hours wow. of of every kind of person here in Hako. You know, women, men, uh, teenagers, people with jobs, people without jobs, students, everybody. And we had a, a town meeting there the other night, and they all came in, and we talked about it and what it's going to be, and and they're all on board, and they're they're. They're amazing. They're really looking forward to it. I understand one of the students is Miss Hacko. That's uh, from 2012, yes. Nothing wrong with that. I got to say, though, it's amazing <laughs> to be because really to the point that I'm making is many of the people who are coming down here and they're looking for volunteer opportunities and they want to engage more in the community. Uh, it's just remarkable to me if you have that type of qualification or skill and it's like you can say, hey, I'm an English teacher. I'm not looking to make a lot of money doing it or any for that matter. 
but I do want to put together a couple classes here and get more involved and try and help with the community. How easy is it to do? That's incredible. It's super easy. I mean, it's, and that's the other thing why we're doing it this way as well. Uh, you know, we are a business, we are here, but as part of the, you know, every business I've worked for, I've always tried to have some sort of community involvement uh, within, the, within the organization. So this is a way that we can kind of give back, uh, you know, giving English classes free of charge uh, for, and then the students are going to be the, the BR students, the ones who are learning uh, to do it. So everyone benefits, uh, you know, I'm going to be there observing, giving tips, helping everybody out. It's, it's, I'm really, really looking forward to getting it started. Sounds great. I mean, I was over at the, at the college just recently doing some volunteer work and, and teaching some, some classes for you guys. And uh, man, I got back into the swing of it really quickly. There's just nothing like spending a couple hours with locals, uh, engaging on that level and, and teaching English. It's just the coolest thing in the world. It doesn't take long to get back into it, does it? It certainly doesn't. Look, we got to run here. We're at the bottom of the hour or the top of the hour. I guess we got to run to another program and it's not mine. I want to thank Andrew Woodbury for joining us today again. Uh, I'm going to put some links over to those articles on his visa runs, if you will, as well to the Global TESOL College, because I understand you've got maybe one or two slots still available for November. Is that right? For November, we still have one or two spaces, yep. Okay, then uh, I'm going to put those links over so you can get a hold of him directly. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. You have been listening to This Week in Costa Rica only on the Overseas Radio Network. Overseasradio.com, broadcasting from Panama to Paris and beyond.